Welcome back. Okay, in the last lecture, the last two lectures actually, we derived the wave equation from scratch from first principles for a guitar string. And then we solved the wave equation using separation of variables, a super powerful technique to solve partial differential equations, linear partial differential equations. And we derived at this solution here, where uh, the solution uh, for the displacement of that string, kind of the vertical position uh, as a function of space x and time, u of x and t, is the product of signs in space, sine waves in space, that satisfy my boundary condition with a period uh, n pi over l that satisfies the boundary condition that my guitar string is pinned uh, to be a length l. And a product of sines in x and cosines in time. And these cosines in time essentially are what are causing the string to oscillate, uh, to, to the amplitude of these sine waves to oscillate in time, which creates the acoustic waves uh, that you hear when you play a guitar string. And at the very end of the second lecture, I showed you that using this trigonometric identity here in pink, you can transform this solution which we derived, this kind of solution here. I'm having a really hard time with uh, stars today you can transform this solution into this very interesting form here where now we've kind of combined our spatial signs and our temporal cosines into these signs of x plus ct and x minus ct. And so in general, you can say that my u of x comma t, if this equals some function uh, let's call it some function f of x, you know, plus ct. That is going to be a solution of this PDE. Uh, and if I had another one, you know, plus f of x minus ct, that is also going to be a solution uh, of this PDE. So what I want to do in this lecture, um, there's kind of two or three things I want to do. First, I want to show you I want to give you some intuition for what this means that I can take my basic solution and write it in terms of this function of x plus ct plus a function of x minus ct. What does that mean? What's the interpretation? I'm going to show you that these are in fact solutions of the PDE. And then I'm also going to show you how this ties into something called the method of characteristics, which is a visual way of plotting the solutions in a space-time diagram. So really cool stuff. Uh, and this ties in a lot with, you know, advanced physics. So if you think about how shock waves form on a fighter jet or on a missile or on a bullet, you're going to be using the method of characteristics uh, and these XT diagrams. Okay, so let's jump in. First off, let's just verify that f of x plus ct is a solution of my partial differential equation. So if I take, uh, let's say, you know, f. Um, Maybe I'll do it over here. I'm like, I've already boxed myself out <laughs> of space. So let's confirm that uh, f of x plus ct is a solution. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to compute, you know, the first, the second partial derivative with respect to time and with respect to space. So, you know, f T, T is just the partial of this with respect to time twice. So the first time I take its derivative, I'm going to get C times F prime. The second time I'm going to get C squared times F double prime. So this is C squared F, uh, you know, double prime X plus CT. And FXX is just F double prime. And so I can verify that this is a solution. Let me see if this is true. Um, is it true that UTT, which is FTT, so C squared F double prime, does that equal C squared FXX, which is F double prime, Yes, these are equal to each other. So I essentially, if u equals f, confirm that u equals f is a solution, 
the way I'm doing that is I'm, I'm taking both of the partial derivatives in, with respect to time and with respect to x, and I'm plugging them into the left and the right hand side of the equation. So utt is ftt, it's this expression here, c squared f double prime, and that had better equal c squared times uxx, but uxx is just f double prime, so c squared f double prime equals c squared fxx or uxx, which is c squared f double prime. So I've confirmed that this is a solution for any function f that you can name, any function you can name that satisfies your boundary conditions, this is going to be a solution of u. Uh, let's just quickly verify the same is true of f of x minus ct. In fact, I think this is going to be pretty trivial because again, the you know f single derivative in t is going to be you know minus c f prime. But the second derivative f t t, we multiply it by another. I'm just doing the, the chain rule here. I'm just saying you know this is partial f with respect to the argument uh, times the derivative of the inside, which is minus ct. Uh, and so this is c squared f double prime. So again, and fxx is still f double prime. Uh, and so again, still we have c squared f double prime, which is utt equals c squared f double prime equals c squared times fxx, which is c squared times f double prime. So it doesn't matter if I have the argument x plus ct or x minus ct, both of those are solutions of, of this partial differential equation. And maybe uh, I'm going to take a break from the guitar string for a minute. I'm just going to think of a, a general wave problem where let's say I just have, I have some string and I am kind of shaking it and creating some wave pattern that I'm then going to like let go. Maybe I have like a really, really, really long guitar string. So a super duper long guitar string, uh, maybe like a cable car string, something like that. So I've got, you know, I, it is under tension at a very, very long distance. There is some tension in this string. And then I have some initial shape. I've got some, some arbitrary shape, uh, kind of f of x at time zero. Okay, so that's this initial shape at time zero. What I'm going to claim is that as long as this satisfies my boundary conditions, which if I have, you know, kind of this thing at tension at a very, very far distance away and I create this shape f of x comma zero that eventually goes to zero smoothly on a compact domain, what's going to happen is as I, you know, let the system go and tension starts to do its work of, of moving this, um, this solution, what's going to happen is this f of x comma zero is going to start traveling to the right and traveling to the left. This is a weird thing that happens in wave physics is that f of x plus ct and f of x minus ct are solutions, which means that, um, you know, at time t, um, how do I want to think about this? If I just shift x over by ct, if I, if I just shift this entire thing over by ct, that is also a solution for my system at time t. And so what that means is that if I, if I come up with this, uh, this x, t diagram, this space time diagram, so x is on the x-axis, t is on the y-axis, and I have my initial shape, I'm just going to draw it as like a little pulse here, then what's going to happen immediately is that waves traveling to the right at speed c are solutions of the partial differential equation. Like a wave traveling at the right like this is a valid solution. And a wave traveling to the left at the same speed is also a valid solution. So if I start with some initial condition and then I let it go, that initial condition is basically going to start propagating out at speed c, both left and right, because these are each solutions of my partial differential equation. This is a very strange and interesting uh, property 
of this kind of hyperbolic partial differential equation, the wave equation, where information kind of passes at a constant speed c in this xt diagram. So this is really important when you think about things like shock waves and shock wave physics. You'll be drawing lots of these diagrams of, you know, what things interact at what times. Now, if I make an even simpler uh, example here, and instead of having an infinite string that goes in both directions, let's say I have a fixed uh, string, and I, I hold one end of that string, so I hold one end of that string, and I start whipping it up and down, and I send a traveling wave through the system. So I whip it up and down, and I send a traveling wave to the right. Now. I kill this left solution because there is no x that can go left. Basically, my hand or that wall is going to be a reflecting boundary condition. And so I only get these solutions that are passing to the right uh, in this xt diagram. And so uh, what's interesting is that there are these regions where essentially, um, OK, I always get confused. So at very large x's, yeah, for very far away, there are regions here where information hasn't propagated yet, hasn't propagated yet. Okay, and so that, that's kind of what we mean by hyperbolic partial differential equations are characterized by there being regions of space and time where it takes a certain amount of time for information to propagate downstream. This is true in shockwave physics. This is true anytime you have a limiting speed of sound or speed of light. There will be regions uh, in space where a disturbance will not have reached that region yet. That's in contrast to things like... Um, elliptic PDEs and parabolic PDEs where you instantly uh, have information kind of traveling across the entire domain. So in Laplace's equation and in the heat equation, if I have a delta function of heat on a rectangular square, one infinitesimal time unit later, I will feel the effects of that heat everywhere on that plate. Now, um, that's an approximation, that's, that's, that's a mathematical approximation that goes into those partial differential equations. There still is information travel, um, you know, in a heated plate. But the equation we use, though that information passes instantaneously. So this is the idea of the method of characteristics. These are called characteristic lines, the lines of, of kind of the lines uh, in the xt diagram that travel at this wave speed c. So this thing literally has a slope, uh, delta x over delta t, this slope would be the constant c, my wave speed, how much x I travel in a given amount of time. I guess technically this would be 1 over c, the way that I've drawn it in this. You could also draw it so x is vertical and time goes to the right. I've seen it lots of different ways. Um, but these, these characteristic lines are essentially lines where information propagates in these linear wave equation um, systems. This is super important in things like fiber optic communication where you're sending a wave you know, through a medium. Uh, you know, there is an information propagation speed, the speed of light, that determines uh, you know, how information is passed along those characteristics in an XT diagram. Good, and it's all because these functions, f of x minus ct and f of x plus ct, are both solutions of my, my partial differential equation, as long as f of x you know, satisfied my initial conditions uh, and as long as my boundary conditions are not somehow violated. Good. So last thing I'm going to do uh, is just revisit the uh, guitar string where I have fixed boundary conditions, because I think this one's kind of interesting. So I'm going to go back uh, to this xt diagram here. But now what I'm going to do is I'm going to kind of um, mark that we know that at x equals 0 and at x equals L, I have these pinned boundary conditions. So my guitar string is fixed at x equals 0 and x equals L. And so information can't pass past those points. It kind of reflects. These are our reflecting boundary conditions. So if I have a wave, if I could, you know, on my guitar string, keep it flat and then have a little disturbance 
and then let the string go, that disturbance is going to travel in both directions until it hits the wall and then start kind of ricocheting off the wall. And so the way this looks is that if I have a little disturbance here, let's say I have you know, some disturbance here, maybe I, I try to pluck the guitar string to be like kind of like a little delta function at that point. It never is gonna be a delta function, it's actually gonna be a triangle. What's gonna happen is that that wave's gonna travel left and right uh, until it starts bouncing and ricocheting off of the wall. And as you notice here, it's actually going to eventually meet up at another location, presumably, and then do it again, and you know, it'll keep kind of bouncing and moving around and superposing. And again, because my um, initial condition, if I pluck my guitar string, it's really, I'm making this very shallow little triangle as my initial condition. What you're going to expect to see is that all of the sines and cosines that make up this, this, uh, this initial condition, this little triangular displacement when I pluck the guitar string, is that immediately all of the sines and cosines are gonna start traveling and bouncing and ricocheting throughout this fixed domain, zero to L. They're all gonna start traveling and moving, and at some time T in the future, they're gonna superimpose again. I'm actually assuming that they're gonna superimpose to a little down triangle here, and then at twice that time, they're gonna re-superimpose back to this initial triangle again, assuming there's no damping, there's no friction. So some really cool things can happen, these kind of you know, bouncing, uh, reflecting, um, traveling wave solutions, but this is an all, all an outfall of the fact that these x plus CT and x minus CT solutions uh, are, are also solutions of your partial differential equation for this constant wave speed C. Okay, um, that's just like a very, very shallow crash course on method of characteristics uh, for this. This is sometimes called the two-way wave equation because your waves can go you know, left and right in both ways, two ways, the two-way wave equation. Okay, thank you.